In this lesson, we'll cover some basics about Microsoft's Active Directory service. Active Directory, or AD, is a database used by many organizations to centralize security and resources. The alternative to a domain environment is a workgroup environment in which authentication, security, and configurations take place on each computer in a network. With a workgroup, each computer stores its own authentication information and data. Managing a network with more than 10 computers in a workgroup environment becomes very time-consuming, and a larger network is completely unmanageable. Active Directory solves the challenge of managing larger networks. In Active Directory's domain environment, all computers in a network share the same centralized database for authentication and configuration. For example, you can define a single user account on a domain controller in Active Directory. That user account can access any resource in the network that the user has been given access to, such as another computer or the printer. An Active Directory environment is much more complex than a workgroup environment. It takes more knowledge and experience to set it up and maintain Active Directory. Let's look at the structure and components of an Active Directory implementation. The Active Directory structure is a hierarchical framework. That means it has different levels of organization to it. The most important component of this structure for you to understand is a domain. A domain is an administratively defined collection of network resources that share a common directory database and security policies. A domain is the Active Directory database that stores the user information and security information. Domains are identified with a domain name system name, or DNS name. When this name includes the full context of the domain, it's known as a distinguished name. In the example, the distinguished name for this domain is eastsim.com. It's also very common for domains to be referred to by their common name. In this example, the common name is eastsim. If you have multiple domains, they're grouped into relationships called trees and forests. A tree is a group of related domains that share the same contiguous DNS namespace, such as eastsim.com or westsim.com. A forest is a group of related domain trees. The forest establishes the relationship between trees that have different namespaces. All trees in a forest share a schema and a common root Active Directory domain service, and they trust each other. A schema is like a template for Active Directory. It defines the object types and attributes of all the objects created in Active Directory domain services. In this example, the trust between trees means that a user account created on the nyc.esim.com domain controller allows that user access to resources throughout the entire domain forest. Objects are the individual resources within Active Directory. These include things like users, groups, computers, printers, and shared folders. For example, here we have three user objects. Kim Marshall, Mary Morgan, and Ralph Ratchet. Each object contains attributes that are units of information used for locating and securing the object. Examples of attributes are a user's name, phone number, and email address. Each user is assigned a Security Account Manager, or a SAM, account name. As such, each username must be unique. Another important component in an Active Directory environment is the Domain Controller. The domain controller is a Windows server that holds a copy of the Active Directory database. A domain can have multiple domain controllers. Each of them holds a copy of the Active Directory database. Changes made in one domain controller are replicated in every other domain controller within the domain. For example, let's say you create a user account in one domain controller. Then the process of replication copies that user account into the Active Directory database of every other domain controller in the domain. Now let's look at organizational units, or OUs. An organizational unit is a container object for users, groups, and computers. OUs are used to logically subdivide and organize resources within the domain. This simplifies security administration and can be used to simplify the granting of rights and permissions. Because the OU is a container object, it can also contain other objects, including other OUs. This allows you to nest multiple organizational units. Examples of OUs in our eSIM domain are marketing, sales, and research. Let's look at an example of how OUs can simplify security. Let's say that all the users in marketing need a similar level of access to network resources. In this case, you can apply the appropriate security policies to the marketing organization. Then every user within that group receives the same policies. If a new user is added to the marketing group, that user automatically receives the same security privileges without you manually assigning them. There's also another type of container object to be familiar with. It looks like an organizational unit, but it's not. It's called a built-in container. In the domain shown here, examples of built-in containers include computers, foreign security principles, 
Manage Service Accounts, and Users. Note that the icon for these containers is slightly different from the icon for the Marketing, Sales, and Research OUs. Like an OU, the built-in containers can contain other objects. They're used to organize Active Directory objects. However, these built-in containers are created by default. They cannot be manually created, moved, renamed, or deleted. They have only a few properties that can be edited, whereas you can configure many parts of an OU. That'll wrap up this lesson. In this video, we covered the basics of the structure and main components of the Active Directory domain environment. We looked at domains and trees and forests. Then we looked at domain controllers and organizational units. We finished the lesson by talking about built-in containers and how they compare to organizational units.